What would be some of the reasons that you've heard investors might not like LLCs? I think the most common thing I hear is just they don't want to pay for the the upfront costs. Um, you have to pay the filing fees depending on what state that you're looking at. In California, it's very expensive. It's 800 bucks to file. Um, and the renewal fee is about the same. So you're looking at that. If you don't live in the state where you want to be organized, you have to pay a registered service agent fee. We do a lot of our entities in Nevada. There, on average, the filing fees with the registered agent fee and just Nevada's uh, Secretary of State filing fees, it's almost $600. When you look at it at the end of the day, though, providing that asset protection and also having those extra tax write-offs is so critical because especially if this is just getting tacked on to your personal income for the year, if you don't have extra write-offs like your legal fees, like being able to write off some of your accounting fees, like being able to write off some of your business entertainment expenses when you're taking friends and family out talking about these investment deals, um, you're going to, at the end of the day, be paying more money to the IRS instead of having more money in your pocket. So that's really critical. And there really are a cost-effective ways of forming these entities with having to form 15 LLCs. And I think that's the other thing I hear a lot is, well, Abby, do I have to put each property in a separate LLC? It really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If you are just doing passive real estate investments, maybe we set up a series LLC. Um, we can do that in some place like Nevada or Wyoming that offers anonymity. In a series LLC, it's similar to a holding company LLC. It's the parent umbrella LLC. And then each time you want to add a property, we add it's called either a cell or a child LLC underneath that parent series LLC. It's very easy to do. You don't have to record those child or cell LLCs to most states. Um, but then there are some other um, disadvantages of the series LLC because only about 20 states in the country recognize those. So if you're an active business, if you're trying to expand your business into other states, maybe you want to go with the holding company LLC option because those are recognized everywhere. You don't want to set up a series LLC, try to break into a different state that doesn't recognize it or has a horrible law that's anti-business, and then you're stuck with having to unwind all of that and just set up a whole holding company umbrella LLC when we could have done that from the beginning. So that's why it's so important to talk, talk to an attorney, um, to talk to your tax preparer and really see what's best for you. And I say more than just an attorney because it's a team when you look at this at the end of the day. It's you, your partners, if you have any, it's your tax preparer, it's your lawyer. How can you best set up? your opportunities to be successful. Well, you took the words out of my mouth. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, every time we speak, I think you just simply reinforce the nuances that go into this, whether it be the industry you're in, the type of business you're operating inside of that industry, specifically real estate in this case, you know, the, the state you live in, there's a lot of different factors and logistics that are going to determine the best route for your individual circumstances. So I couldn't agree more. I think at least having an initial conversation, it doesn't cost any money, takes just a small amount of time, is well worth the effort just to, to make sure that you're, you're protected first and foremost. So guys, you could reach out to, to Abby and her team at uh, structure at vipfinancialeducation.com. Make sure you spell that all out, structure at vipfinancialeducation.com. Include a first, last name and um, direct contact number so that they can get in touch with you and, and answer some of your specific questions. I always forget questions when we do these interviews. Uh, most of the questions that I've written down here are FAQs that I hear more often. And I think simplifying the process so that you can sort of keep things more on a, on a repeat basis. For example, I put $100,000 into a Maven deal over the summer. It's expected to pay out uh, roughly $39,000 in just a six month period of time. I have yet to see uh, many, if any at all, of these Maven deals produce less than a 25% re return on the loans that our audience are contributing to those projects in, on average, a six-month timeline or less. So if you annualize it out, we're looking at 50% ROIs on loans that are provided. Um, as participants, you have a minimum obligation of $50,000 or, or more to get involved in those, but that money can come from anywhere. So people are tapping into a lot of what we've taught for the last 11, 12 years by way of using debt weapons and borrowing other people's money, OPM, in order to get involved and allow the bank's money or allow friends and family's money to work on their behalf. And by leveraging their way up, you can sort of leapfrog your way to wealth versus trying to do things purely organically by using what in most households has become a very limited amount of net cash flow each and every month 
due to inflation going up due to high interest rates on non-mortgage related consumer debts. I mean, credit card rates are through the roof at this point. Auto loan rates are through the roof. Just a trip to the grocery store seldom cost me less than a hundred bucks, even when I'm just trying to get in and out. So at this point, it's tough to sim simply survive, much less collect enough money at the end of each month uh, to where you can make any significant amount of progress investing. You almost have to get into uh, a, a form of leveraging to make some of this stuff work. I, I just want to encourage people to at least know that if you're going into something, into these projects, find a way to keep it as efficient as possible. And usually hiring someone like Abby doesn't have to be Legal Sphere Group. I certainly have found you guys to be uh, ideal for various reasons. Um, and I'm sure there are people that would be considered direct competitors of yours that would offer similar services for similar rates that are of similar quality, but they're few and far between and they're not easy enough to find to where I'm easily cherry picking them out. I, I always have a very difficult time coming across top quality service providers and I, and I have found that in you guys. So I highly suggest everybody at least get that initial consultation because just hiring Abby uh, or her team or, or any other company that does a great job for a fair price will ultimately end up saving you so much more money than you otherwise would have spent by either doing it wrong or not doing it all or ending up with a, a problem that uh, it lands you in court. Uh, and, and in that case, you're going to be ponying up some serious cash. And if it's done right, I find that that efficiency is there to where uh, on these Maven projects, if I do it correctly, if I send set up an LLC or a holding company and that project is seen through to completion, I assume I can just simply reuse that same holding company for the next project that I get involved with, right? Yeah, absolutely. And when you're looking at these like kind investments, you're able to put those into the same entity. Um, once you get done with one project, six months later, sure, use the same LLC to get into the next one. It's when we co-mingle things like rental properties with oil and gas syndications, with other passive real estate investments, that when we, that's when we get into trouble and really need to think about separating things. And that's why this umbrella structure, whether it's a series LLC or a holding company LLC, why that's really beneficial to a lot of people who want to be serious investors. And to your point earlier, we may not be the best fit for everybody. If you want to try to do things yourself online, if you want to hire a local firm, um, that's up to you. We really try to work with investors who take this seriously because we look at things not just the first transaction, we look at what their portfolio is going to look like five, 10 years from now. And that's why we're talking today about umbrella structures and that sort of thing, because we want to make sure that investors are set up to be able to easily add entities and they're not having to unwind anything. Uh, we had a client recently who had his money tied up in uh, a Roth IRA, was trying to get in on a Maven deal, um, actually had to set him up an LLC at the very last minute to be able to get the funds wired in time by, by closing day. And no one needs that kind of stress. So if we're able to help you get that structured properly, it makes the uh, Maven process for sure, but also just your other investments so much easier to do when you're buying, leasing, or selling real estate with an entity. Well, that's fantastic information. I want to thank you again for your time. We, we certainly appreciate you uh, spending some, um, some of your valuable time answering these questions, because this is a complicated topic. You know, it's a lot like the accounting topic. It's just confusing to most of us. So you, you've certainly cleared up a lot of these FAQs and, and we'll be excited to bring you back on. And anytime I keep adding to my list, I'm going to reach out and, and drag you back onto the channel to help these folks out. So thank you again. I do appreciate you guys. One last time, if you want some assistance in double checking your circumstances, simply email structure at vipfinancialeducation.com and uh, include a first name, last name, and f direct contact number so that uh, Abby or her team can, can get in touch with you. So Abby, until next time, let's, uh, you know, let's wish everybody a, a farewell. And uh, I always say, make it a great day, guys, and keep on cash flowing.